In this section, we're going to graph and label parabolas. So this first one asks you to graph the parabola x equals 2 times the quantity y minus 1 squared. Then we'll need to label the vertex, the axis of symmetry, the direction of opening, the focus, the directrix, and the lattice rectum. Let's get started by finding the vertex. Since it's in vertex form, we already have a head start. So all we need to do to find the y-coordinate of our vertex is to find the opposite of what's inside of the parentheses. So in this case, we see a y minus 1. So that means our y-coordinate of our vertex is going to be positive 1. For the x-coordinate, we look at what is sitting outside by itself outside of the parenthesis area and there isn't anything so we assume that that means that the x-coordinate of our vertex is 0. So our vertex is the point 0, 1. So if we want to go ahead and label that on our graph here, plot that right here, line up to our label that I have stored in here ahead of time and write that in as our vertex. Next we can go ahead and find our axis of symmetry because it's going to go through our vertex and it's going to be either a horizontal or vertical line. Since the graph is, is defined in terms of x and not in terms of y, we know that it's going to open either left or right, so our axis of symmetry is going to go through our vertex horizontally. So we can put that in there. The axis of symmetry goes right through the vertex, and the graph of the parabola will be symmetrical on either side of this line. So we've gone and we've got our vertex here. Check these off as we go. We got our vertex, we got our axis of symmetry, our direction of opening. Uh, which way is it going to open? Well, we know it's going to open left or right because it was defined for x. So now we look at our lead coefficient and we see a 2 here. Since it's a positive 2, since a is greater than 0, we know that it's going to open to the right. So our direction of opening is going to be right. So now we've got that marked in here. Now we need to go ahead and figure out what our focus and directrix are. The way that we find our focus and directrix, we know that the focus is going to be somewhere along the line of symmetry, a uh, set distance away from the vertex, and we can calculate that distance by taking 1 over 4a. So if we know that we're using the formula 1 over 4a, and we said already that a was going to be that positive 2 up here, so we'll go ahead and highlight that. We have 1 over 4a, we know a is equal to 2, so it's 1 over 8. So that means 1 eighth of a unit away from the vertex is going to be the focus. And it's always going to follow our direction of opening, so in this case, to the right. So our focus is going to be located to the right. So we'll go one eighth of a unit and that's going to just barely be a little bit past where we put our vertex. So on a graph like this it's very hard to tell. And I'm going to draw a line to the label I have in here. That is our focus. So we've got our direction of opening, our focus, now we need to get our directrix. The directrix is also going to be one eighth of a unit away from the vertex, just the other direction. And it's going to be a line that's perpendicular to the axis of symmetry. So in this case it'll look just like this. We have a line that's going to be drawn just as far away from the vertex as the focus was, except on the other side away from the direction of opening, and that line is perpendicular to the axis of symmetry. Now it asks us to finally put in the lattice rectum. 
and the lattice rectum is the line that goes through the graph, to, or touches each end of the graph and goes through the focus. However, we didn't make our graph yet. So to go back and make our graph, we can make a t-chart, but we have to remember that since it's, a term, it's defined in terms of x, we start our t-chart with the y values. So in this case, we found the y value of our vertex to be 1. So we're going to start there and work on either side of that value. So we have our y values here, 1 in the middle, and then we picked three integers on either side of 1. And then you just use your calculator. You plug in something like 4 into this equation. 4 minus 1 is 3. 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18. 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4, times 2 is 8, and so on, until you fill up your t-chart. So once you've got your t-chart, you can start plotting points. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. We have our vertex already plotted, so point 2, 2, get that on there. Um, we have the point two zero also. We have eight three, maybe somewhere up in this area, and eight negative one, which will be down here. So then, if we trace in our curve along here, it's going to look something like this. So this is the parabola going through our plotted points, through our vertex. And now if we want to go ahead and take that last step and draw in the lattice rectum, I will put that in here. Give you a very short little line. And we'll connect that up to our label here for the lattice rectum. So now we've found all the things we need. We found our vertex, our axis of symmetry, direction of opening, which is going to be to the right, our focus, which is very close to our vertex, but a little bit to the right, directrix, the line going perpendicular to the axis of symmetry, slightly to the left, and the lattice rectum, the uh, vertical line in this case that goes perpendicular to the axis of symmetry through the focus. Now, if you're used to using your calculator to graph these, I would recommend when it's defined for x not to do that. However, if you do, at the end I'm going to come back to this slide and I will show you how to use your calculator to do that. So let's go to our second example here. We need to graph 4x squared minus 6x plus 2 and label all the things that we just labeled in the last one. So first of all, let's start with our vertex. Now this isn't in vertex form, however, we know that we can use negative b over 2a to find the, uh, in this case, the x-coordinate of our vertex since it's defined for y. So let's do that. We have negative 6 is our b-coordinate, our b-value here, and we take that and divide it by 2a. And that's going to give us a positive 6 over a positive 8, which simplifies down to 3 fourths. Now, in order to find the y-coordinate of our vertex, we pop that 3 fourths back in 4x and see what we can get. And that's going to simplify down to negative 1 fourth, leaving us with the coordinate 3 fourths, negative 1 fourth. So let's go ahead and plot that in and label our vertex right away. So we've got our vertex plotted here at 3 fourths, negative 1 fourth, labeled it on our graph. Next we need to find our axis of symmetry. Now the axis of symmetry is going to go, since it's defined for y this time, is going to be going up and down through the vertex. So all we have to do is draw the vertical line that goes through the vertex and that will be our axis of symmetry. Okay, so we've got our axis of symmetry plotted. Now we need to find our focus and directrix. So to do that we need to figure out how far away it is from the vertex. We know it's 1 over 4a, 
and uh, I was highlighted in green up here, we have our a value of 4, so we just need to plop it into the equation. And so if we have 1 over 4a and a is 4, we're going to have 1 over 16. So the distance between our vertex and our focus is 1 16th of a unit, which on this kind of scale is incredibly small. And same thing, 1 16th of a unit from our vertex to our value of our directrix line. We've got our focus plotted and labeled here. And now let's get our directrix line. It's going to be also very, very close to the vertex here, same distance as the focus is, and perpendicular to the axis of symmetry as always. Then we finally need that lattice rectum, but of course we need to make sure that we draw our graph in before we can plot that. So let's go ahead and this time, instead of using a t-chart, since it is defined in terms of y, Let's just go ahead and use our calculator. So if you pop in the value, or the function, 4x squared minus 6x plus 2, your calculator is going to give you both a graph and a table that you can work from. So in this case, the graph looks like it's going to be a fairly narrow parabola facing upwards, which confirms everything we've been thinking so far. And our uh, table here gives us some points that we can plot. So let's Let's plot a few of those. At x equals negative 2, y equals 30, so that's off our charts. At x equals negative 1, y equals 12, again off our charts. x equals 0, we have 2, so let's plot in 2 right here. x equals 1, we have 0, so it's going to cross 0 right there. So I'm a little bit dizzy on this with all the labels, but we can plot that in. At x equals 2, y equals 6, so we'll plot that up here. And so forth. Beyond that, it looks like it's going to be cut off our graph. And if we connect our points to the best of our ability and try to trace that in, it's going to come out looking something like this. A fairly narrow parabola going through our vertex and curling back up. So finally, let's draw in that lattice rectum as we were asked to do. In order to do that, you draw the line through the focus that connects to both sides. So in that, this case, it's going to be a very, very small line. There we go. Hard to see in this. And we'll label that as our lattice rectum. Let's just make sure we didn't miss anything. We need to label the vertex. Got it. The axis of symmetry going vertical in this case. Direction of opening, that's up. Uh, we need to make sure we get that in there. So we have our direction of opening is going to be up. Our focus, we have that plotted down in there, kind of very tight in this example. Directrix, same thing, very close to the vertex. And the lattice rectum is the line that's going to cross perpendicular to the axis symmetry. So in this case, it's going to be horizontal. And it's going to pass through the focus point. So it looks like we have everything covered. So let's go ahead and go back to that first example. If you're curious how you'd use your calculator, the way that you would do that is you'd have to solve for y first. There are other options you have, but the best way would be to solve for y. So if you have your original equation, x equals 2 times quantity y minus 1 squared, divide both sides by 2, and then take the square root of both sides, you have to keep the positive and the negative, and we'll explain why in a second. So that's plus or minus the square root of x over 2, and then you add 1 to both sides to get y equals 1 plus square root of x over 2, or y minus square root of x over 2. Now when you plot that in your calculator, this is what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to put both of those equations in, the plus and the minus. Because remember, a function has to pass the vertical line test. And if you look at this graph that we ended up drawing before, this does not pass the vertical line test. So each of the top half and the bottom half of this sideways facing parabola are treated as separate functions by your calculator. So once you plot those in, you're going to get a table of values. At negative 1, you're getting errors, which makes sense because we don't have anything at negative 1. 
and beyond that you have a value for y1 and y2. You have a value for your positive and your negative graph of the square root function. And if you look at the graph that is drawn by the two of these functions put together, it's going to end up looking just like what you drew here.